Good evening. I'm Norm Wehmer along with Mike Bauman for your high school football game of the week. We're in the Northern Buckeye Conference and the Rossford Bulldogs hosting the Lake Flyers. Both teams at 3-2 and two in the NBC. Uh, really a battle for third place in this game tonight, Mike, for the Lake Flyers. They were hoping to make it to the playoffs. I talked to the coaches. They said the uh, computers say they got about an 8% chance of making it. As long as you have a chance, you got a chance. Well, getting a chance to talk to Coach Emmons before the game, having Jared back is obviously huge. That was a pretty emotional letdown when he got hurt against Eastwood, but he'll be back tonight. Probably won't see him run the football as much, but it's good to have him back tonight if you're a Lake fan. And on the other side for Rossford, they've had Nate Childress banged up a lot this year. He hasn't seen a lot of playing time. It's a big senior night tonight. Parents are on the field, so you'll probably see him on the defensive line a little bit tonight. So some guys are going to be back, but both these teams have potential to score points in bunches. All right, and it's the Rossford at Bulldogs hosting the Lake Flyers. It's coming your way next on CW13 and the Toledo Sports Network. Tilt. The Lake Flyers 3 and 2 in the league, 6 and 2 overall. The Rossford Bulldogs to kick off. Also 3 and 2 in the league, but 3 and 5 overall. Kick going to be taken at about the 15 yard line. Walters across the 25, stiff arm at the 30, and down at the 36. Yeah, interesting matchup tonight, Norm. When you look at both of these teams, Rossford has a chance at 3-5 and five overall to still finish third in the Northern Buckeye Conference. That's something they haven't been able to achieve yet. Getting a chance to talk to Coach Todd Drews back tonight. You're going to see the parents down there on the sidelines for the seniors to get an opportunity to see what they've sacrificed for for their boys over the last four years. Nate Childress, you'll probably see a little bit of night at defensive line. The UT commit for Rossford and Jared Reddig is at pretty much full health for the Lake Flyers. And he'll be at quarterback to start things off. First and 10 Flyers at their own 36 yard line. Reddick to throw on first down to Walters incomplete. Never quite got the ball into his hands before he tried to turn around. Well, Walters has been one of his favorite targets this year. 31 receptions, 591 yards. 19.1 yards to catch and nine touchdowns between him and Connor Bowen and you've got Brandon Short in the backfield at 18 touchdowns. They've been one of the most explosive offenses so far this year in the NBC. Second and 10 for the Flyers. Greenlee's in motion. Reddick to throw over the middle. Got a man. The water into Rossford territory down near the 36-yard line. Well, that time, Rossford rushing an extra player from the linebacking core, trying to bring the pressure on Reddig. They're going to try to mix it up tonight. That was one thing that I talked about with Coach Drews back before the game, about how you slow down a guy like Reddig, who's a dual threat, who can run and throw. That time, they bring some pressure, and he finds DeLauder on a seam over the middle. First down at the 36. Short. To about the 31. Gain a five on first down. Well, that's been a play that they've devastated a lot of people with this year, that little jet sweep off the edge. And Short is one of those guys that's got a low center of gravity, explosive through the hole. But right now, the key, getting yards on first down for Lake, 
that's going to be huge for them as this game goes on if Rossford cannot slow them down here on first down. Second and five. Four wide outs. Reddick rolls, throws, Walters. Just inside the 25 should be a plenty for the first down. Jared Reddick obviously got hurt very early on in that game against Eastwood. His brother has played well in his place over the last couple of games, but obviously the following week going up against Genoa, that was a tough loss. So emotionally that was difficult for Jared, who's been a leader in this class really since he was a young kid, Coach Emmons was telling me, but he's back tonight. And as you saw in that throw, he, he's as good as anybody as I've ever seen throwing on the run. Screen coming. Short hit behind the line. And down all the way back to the 31-yard line, it's going to lose seven. How'd they get so much penetration on that side? Well, they did a great job shifting the line, shedding the blocks on the outside and just reading Short's keys. You see right here, just doing a great job on outside containment. Travis Sobleski, one of the guys out there following Brandon Short. That's just a good job reading the quarterback's eyes and recognizing the play. And a couple of missed blocks on top of it, too. Second and 17. Raddick to throw. Looks left, throws left. Got a man. It's complete. Counter Bowen and out of bounds. And got a nice chunk of that back. Well, you see, that's the difficult thing about trying to stop this offense. It's a wing T, but really it's like a spread wing T. And if you allow Jared Redding time to sit back there and find his targets, he can hurt you. That time they drop back in coverage, and Connor Bowen just sits in front of that defensive backfield and is able to get some yardage on the outside. And he's made some incredible catches this year. And he's got three or more really nice targets. Gain of 12, it's third down at about five. Short. Nice block on the edge, first down. To the 11-yard line. Yeah, Austin Hess, the senior that time, doing dirty work on the right side of the line for the Lake Flyers. Six foot 200, but you see right there, doing a good job on the run block. So first and 10 at the 11-yard line. First drive of the game. Hand off short. Inside the 10, down near the 7. And you see the quick feet that time to avoid the defender in the backfield. And that's one of the tough things to do with Brandon Shore to stop him on the first tackle. 5'10", 204, got a real low center of gravity and burst through the hole. Big reason why he's got 18 touchdowns this year. And soft hands, as you saw on the screen pass as well. And he plays bigger than that 5'10", 204. Absolutely. Second down. They can get a first down. Reddick to throw. Toward the corner of the end zone. Got it. Touchdown, Connor Bowen. Nice back shoulder throw. Put it right where Connor could get it. These two are a good one-two punch in the basketball court. And you see that time, just a little fade to the corner of the end zone. And gets it right on Bowen's back shoulder. You called it, Norm. That time, Rossford brought a little pressure up the middle. But the offensive line did a good job on the pass block. Four down linemen. And Connor Bowen runs a nice, precise route to the edge of the end zone. Almost 600 yards receiving on the year for that young fella, and he gets another touchdown. Did a nice job getting his hips turned, which gets those shoulders turned and got him uh, around to be able to catch that ball. Extra point line drive is up and good. 8.37 to go first quarter. Lake strikes first, and 7 0 Flyers will be back on the Toledo Sports Network and CW13. On the job for you for over 100 years. You need a career. You need a future. Local 8 can help you make it happen. Join the men and women who build our community. Become a part of a proud tradition. Build your career. Build your future with the brothers and sisters of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 8. We're on the job for you. We're on the job for you. All 
All right, Boot going to be taken at about the 11-yard line. Got running room, cut it to the outside. Into Lake Territory, and finally out of bounds as the kicker, Adam Duncan, is the one that saved the touchdown. Chase Bainey on the return. Well, look at Chase Bainey. He's a speedster, leading the NBC in receptions and reception yardage so far this year. And Rossford does an excellent job setting the wedge here. And boom, there's your seam right there. Great blocking. And he busts it out to the outside here, makes one man miss. And Adam Duncan comes up with the shoestring touchdown saving tackle. But this kid's a playmaker. Nice instant replay there by the guys in the truck. 5'11", 175 is Chase Bainey. All right, first down at the Lake 38-yard line. And Bainey going to get the call on first down. Well, and Coach Drewsback said you might see Eric Davis in some wildcat formation tonight. They've used three quarterbacks this year, Kyle Sherman and John Allen, fifth and sixth in the NBC, respectively, in terms of touchdowns and passing yardage. Eric Davis has played a little bit at that spot, but he's got between receiving and rushing about 1,000 yards of offense on the year. So he's a dynamic playmaker. So keep an eye on that young fellow tonight and what kind of packages they use against those Flyers D. Yep, John Allen is your quarterback. Eric Davis in the backfield, four wideouts. Bainey in motion to the left. Go to the little screen. First down to the 24-yard line. Tell you what, that was a nice little screen that time. Set up perfectly. Got a nice block from Travis Sobleski, number 75, the junior, 6'2", 210. Doing work on offense and defense so far tonight. Andrew Myers on the reception. And first down at the Lake 25. First Rossford drive of the game. And off Davis. Broke a tackle. And broke another. Inside the 10, the five touchdown. And there he is, Eric Davis. Showing the toughness and the quickness. That was something Coach Drew's back talked about, how he wants to get the ball in the hands of his playmakers tonight and Bainey and Davis. And between the two of them, they were able to help lead Rossford to a touchdown very quickly on their first drive of the game. But that time, Lake only brought four Norm up front. Rossford did a good job of staying on their blocks, and there was a wide open hole right on the right side over the tackle. Extra point is down, kick is up, and it is good. So one drive apiece, and we're tied at seven. Sit back, this one's not going to be dull. 7.09 to go in the first on the Toledo Sports Network at CW13. Remember this? Uh -huh. How could you forget? <laughs> Bet you wish you had one of these last winter. Pass Electronics has remote car starters from 129 installed, plus heated seats starting at just 149. No one can stop the winter, but with TAS, you can have a nice, warm vehicle waiting for you. Get over to TAS today. TAS Electronics. Feel the power. TAS Electronics. It's hot. All right, back we are in the Toledo Sports Network, CW13. Norm Waymer, Mike Bauman, 7-7. Seven, seven. Each team has had one drive. Each team has scored, and we're waiting for our football. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say the, the kicker is waiting for a football. Great night out here for late October as well. About 60 degrees down there. Not a lot of wind at all. But but a lot of mosquitoes. Lots, <laughs> down there where we, lots of skeeters, where yeah. We did our open. <laughs> Prior to kick off, Walters got to go back to the eight-yard line to bring it in. Not much blocking, but broke tackles. 35-40, 45-50, down the sidelines, goodbye. 92-yard touchdown return, Todd Walters. Holy shnikes. How did he get through? He, hit, he ran right through four or five Bulldogs. Once he did, through that line, there wasn't anybody there. Rossford had perfect coverage on this kickoff. They had three guys in perfect coverage right here. Got all the way down. 
Watch this right here. One, two, three. And Walters just stutter steps right here, makes the first guy miss. And that just poor pursuit angle on the part of the Bulldogs right there. And that allows him to get to the outside, and then he throws a nice stiff arm here, gets a block on the edge, a big block, and that's all she wrote. All right, extra point line drive, just inside the left upright. So it's late 14, Rossford 7, 6.53 to go first quarter on the Toledo Sports Network and CW 13. The Union Plumbers, Steam Fitters, and HVACR Service Mechanics of UA Local 50 build the powerhouses that generate your electricity. Install and service your heating and air conditioning systems and install the plumbing systems that protect the health of this nation. Everywhere there's a building being built, retrofitted, or maintained, members of UA Local 50 are on the job with skills and the latest sustainable building practices. To do the job right, UA Local 50 Plumbers, Steam Fitters, and Service Mechanics. Building America's future. You, like you said, not good pursuit angles. Now there's a squib kick. Going to be finally scooped up at about the 17. Carasone on a return, Anthony Carasone. And Rosford will set up first and 10 at about their own 24. I want to say thanks again to our great sponsors here on Toledo Sports Network. IBW Local 8, they've been our sponsor for six years here on TSNW. Also, UA50, Local 50, pipe fitters and plumbers out there. Special thanks going out to Bob Lynn and the guys at UA Local 50. We could not do it without you. Allen will hand it off to Davis, hit near the line. Spun off the initial tackle and picked up a couple. Yeah, that time three down linemen, but one guy standing up on the strong side of the field, Austin Hess again, coming in off the edge. Not before De Eric Davis is able to pick up a couple. But that's what you're going to see tonight with Rossford in a spread, Lake doing kind of a pseudo spread with that multiple wing tee that they do. You're going to see them try to disguise the pressure and also their coverage. Well, Davis's first carry had a 25-yard touchdown run. <laughs> yeah. So why not go back to him? Nobody open there. Allen just going to run for it and get out of bounds and avoid a bigger loss than what it could have been. Yeah, almost looked like a broken play that time in the backfield. I don't know if it was just a misread on what was supposed to happen that time, but did not look like the design play. Well, his, his throw wasn't there. So when that wasn't there, well, he didn't have much choice. But, you know, since Todd Drewsback has taken over here out at Rossford, they've really opened things up offensively. They can put points on the board, but once again, it's just taking care of the football and disguising what they're doing. Third down now at about 11. Allen going to keep it, and not much there. And he ran, he ran right into uh, uh, Jacob Reddick, who grabbed on with both hands, and then he got a lot of help. Well, and Austin Segetti, number 71, 6'2", 220 up front, did a good job shedding the block that time. See the big fella right there? And reading the football. And that's what you have to do with this spread that they do too because you'll see Rossford do that jet sweep where they'll bring Chase Bainey in motion, and you have to really keep an eye on what the quarterback's doing back there. Walters and Duncan back for the Flyers. And this is Walters from his own 44. Well, backwards to the 40 and then down. Good coverage that time by the Bulldogs. I want to say thanks again, too, to TAS Electronics. It's time to get ready for winter, folks. Ah! And if it's uh, what the Farmer's Almanac is saying, it's going to be a doozy. So make sure you go get your automatic car starter. Get ready for winter. I hope it's not going to be bad, but TAS Electronics will hook you up. Also, First Federal Bank, your area bank, here on the Toledo Sports Network. I prefer to call it eventful. <laughs> First and 10 for the Flyers at their own 43. Walters in motion toward the line. Reddick to throw. Got a man. Out of bounds near midfield. And a flag down. Bowen on the reception. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a late hit. And you see that time, you got to pay respect to Brandon Short on the wide side of the field. They fake that jet sweep, go to the right side, and the man's wide open. 
So a lot of that has to do with what 43 has been able to do so far this year. But I think we're going to get not on the first hit, but the second hit is where it's going to come in on Rossford. Well, the thing I want to want everybody to watch with Jared Reddick, and Reddick has uh, committed to, to go to the University of Finley. Watch how accurate he is throwing on the run. I'm not sure in the time that I've done high school football, which has been 13, 14 years, I've, I've ever seen anybody as accurate on the run. Well, and I think, too, his decision-making, especially for being at the high school level, since he's been a sophomore, has been pretty good, and he's matured every year on that element as well. Reddick the throw, here comes the screen. Bowen broke one tackle inside the 30 to the 27. So far, Rossford has read that pretty well tonight, but once again, fundamental tackling comes into play. you got to wrap up, especially in that second level of defense. And Reddick's another one of those guys. He's only about a buck 80, but he's very quick, he's very shifty, and he's got great hands. I mean, we've seen him make some great catches this year. So that was actually a pretty good read by Rossford, but where they're getting hurt right now is the yards on first down. Short going to get the call. First down. Inside the 20 to the near the 15-yard line. You know, and so far the Bulldogs have had a difficult time not allowing the playmakers of the Flyers to turn up field. Once again, Austin Hess, another good block there on the outside, helping Brandon Short turn the corner. And that's going to come into play a lot because when you allow them to get to the edge of the field, then you have to pay respect to the edge of the field, and it opens up the middle. And you've got guys like DeLauder and Adam Duncan to watch out for in the seam. On first down, Reddick will swing it out to short. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Second touchdown pass, Jared Reddick. Made it look easy that time. Adam Duncan with a nice block on the outside, as you see here on the replay. Short coming out of the backfield, Adam Duncan right there. Gets the block right at the 10, and that's enough for Brandon Short to break it and get to the end zone. You know, they, they talk about the yak, the yards after catch, YAC. And so much of that has to do with how your receivers block downfield. And, and that sprung the corner. Duncan for the extra point. It's good, 4.05 to go in the first. It's now Lake 21 and Rossford 7. We'll be back on the Toledo Sports Network and CW 13. Rossford Schools, encouraging excellence in education, preparing each student for their future. Steadfast in achievement with a lifetime of memories. Supported by exceptional faculty, dedicated staff, student programs and activities. Outstanding alumni, volunteers in the community, Honoring those who serve our country with advanced placement, dual enrollment, and post-secondary options. Rossford Schools. Rossford Strong. And tonight, the Flyers' offense looks like a well-oiled machine. Well, they're really throwing the whole kitchen sink at them. Duncan will squib this down the middle. Taken at the 20-yard line. On the return, Cooper Heck. Yeah, and only took one big one from Mark Emmons and company to say, you know what, I think uh, I think we're just not going to kick it to number six. And you know what it does, it puts the pressure on Rossford's offense. I thought the line of scrimmage for the Lake Flyers won that last series. Rossford won the first series. So let's see if we start to see some more uh, different packages and some more wide sets here from the Bulldogs. You got John Allen, the senior, getting the nod tonight at the QB spot for Rossford. Head off Davis on first down. Got to the corner. Stiff arm and out of bounds. Duncan cut off the corner, but not before Davis ran for a first. Yeah, and you look at the year that young fella's had fifth in rushing, 650 yards rushing, averaging 5.2 yards a carry. And also really doing a great job as a receiver this year. 78 points total on the season from that young fellow. Well, the battle is going to be to try to get him to the edge. This time Davis up the middle broke a tackle. 
And if it wasn't for Duncan again, Davis would have still been running. <laughs> Well, Sam Beal was a man that time up front, 5'11", 235, basically takes out two guys on the right side of the line that time, and Eric Davis is able to break up through the hole. They've been doing a pretty good job on the right side of the line tonight. And they waste no time to give it to him again. Broke another tackle. Inside the 40, going to be just short of the first down, it appears. But again, a nine on first down, and we, you're able to get that kind of yardage on first down. It really opens up the different things that you can do. Well, and it allows them to get into this momentum, too, and keep the defense on their heels. Give them eight. Give it to them again, but not much there that time. Well, Lucas Lombardo has had a really good year up front. Another guy to keep an eye on out in Millbury is number nine, Drayton Williams, a junior at 6'2", 210 both on a tight end spot and off the defensive edge. I mean, he's he's got a lot of potential. Well, now it's third and two. Allen to throw. Oh, now he's going to take off and he's got room. Enough for the first down. Rosford faithful wanted a late hit. But that was just kind of continuation of the tackle. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, judge good judgment call by the official. I mean, the one thing that you can ask is that they're they're being consistent, and that's all you can ask for. I mean, that time finishing the play, not coming in late, so it's probably why he made that no call there. Davis on first down to the 27-yard line, a gain of three. Well, and, and, you know, they'll take that three, four yards on first down because eventually you'll see them try to hit it on outside, either with Myers or number six, Chase Bainey. Myers, 24 catches, 279 on the year. He's averaging over a first down per catch. So having Davis back there allows them to open things up a little bit. Second and seven. Allen to throw, screen coming. This is Carasone, lost the football. But the Bulldogs are going to get it back. Yeah, Steve Carey, the senior, Johnny on the spot that time. Great little play here on the screen. But you watch right here as he turns up field. Boom. Just typical strip. Uh, third down. Davis didn't have anywhere to go. It was Drayton Williams, who you just mentioned, making the sack. Well, he's big and he's fast, and, you know, when you're 6'2 like that, you can see over the line of scrimmage. And that time he just does a great job reading Allen. And I tell you what, uh, the younger Reddick, Jacob Reddick, is going to have himself a good target next year. And at 25 to go in the first. 21-7 Lake. Heck, the man in motion, Allen back to throw. Throws over the middle and got picked off, Todd Walters. Yeah, that time Allen never looked off his primary target, which was Chase Bainey. The misdirection does not fool the Flyers. Brandon Short comes in, bringing the pressure. Allen gets rid of it really probably before he wanted to. And Walters Absolutely. making a great pick. Absolutely. It's one of those situations where it's fourth down. Well, we got a personal foul post-possession on the Lake Flyers. But it's one of those situations that's fourth down. You got to get rid of the football. Exactly. You got the rush coming in. So even though it's technically a turnover, you, you didn't have anything to lose really by throwing that pass. Right. And Allen so far this year, I mean, their, their numbers between Allen and Sherman are pretty close. Sherman, 48 for 98 for 830 yards. Allen, 48 for 89 for 662 yards and six touchdowns. But good pressure by Short up the middle that time, really forcing him to get rid of it. So Lake will start off first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Raddick throws on the run again and right on the numbers. First down, Bowen broke a tackle. Broke another tackle, and broke a third tackle, and a fourth tackle, and he's still going inside the 20-yard line of the 18. Well, give credit to Connor Bowen and his dancing shoes, but once again, Rossford that time dropping three in coverage. 
they have the guys here. Now, this is what I mean by pursuit angle. You're in front of your man here. He makes a miss. Right here, Eric Davis charging in. Just a nice cutback by Connor Bone. That's just an athletic play right there, but pursuit angle is huge in football. And it's hard with a guy like Bowen because do you run full speed at him or have him shoot Juki out of your shoes like that or do you slow down and try to keep him in front of you? They tried both that time and he made the play. The pitch, catch and run amounts to 70 yards. First and 10 at the Rossford 18. Here's, sh well that's not short this time. This is Duncan, I believe. I bit the fake to the right with short, and it was Duncan to the left for eight yards to the 10. You have a little double handoff trickaroo on the sweep. And once again, you see the, the dynamic offense right now from the Lake Flyers. They've gone over the middle. They've gone to the edge. And when you have a guy like there, back there like Short who can run and catch out of the backfield, it really opens things up. And Reddig, as you said, Norm, his arm is on point tonight. Second and two from the 10-yard line. Walters in motion toward the line and handoff short. Not much there, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. And it's been a fun one. It's Lake 21, Rossford 7. We'll take time and be back with the second quarter on the Toledo Sports Network and CW 13. The Big Apple Deli has all the food for your next party or get together. The best subs, salads, soups, pasta, party trays, and great, great lunch and dinner specials. The Big Apple Deli, 2118 Woodville Road, has got you ready for all your party needs or just stop out for a great, great lunch. Both teams at three and two in the Northern Buckeye Conference. And this is, uh, this is Jacob Reddick who's just going to take the snap and run it in from 10 yards out. Young fellow's got some potential, you know, and, and I think for him, experience is going to be huge as he grows into a, a quarterback here at Lake out in Millbury. Played as a freshman on the basketball team last year. Was a really good three-point specialist, but, you know, he's gotten some time this year with his brother being hurt. They see Brandon Short and Adam Duncan doing a good job on the edge that time, allowing him to turn the corner, but... Young fellow's gotten a lot of big playing time this year, and that's going to help him next year. Duncan for the extra point. Low line drive, but it gets through. At 11.55 to go in the second, it's Lake 28, Rossford 7. We'll take time and be back on the Toledo Sports Network at CW 13. Duncan to kick off. The squib has worked well. Picked up there at about the 23. 35-40 in pretty good field position for the Bulldogs. Chris Pickett, a freshman on the return. Well, I, you know, I like what Rossford did on the first drive. A good mix between the screen and the run game up the middle. But the last couple of possessions, they haven't had those holes in the middle of the field like they had on that first drive. So... It'll be interesting to see if Drew's back and company try to spread things out here a little bit and continue to try to go to the edge of the field and get the ball to their playmakers in space, especially Chase Bainey, number six, because that's a guy like Bowen who has quick feet, good hands, and then he turns the corner, he has a chance to take it to the house. Yeah, and one will open up the other without a doubt. John Allen out of the shotgun, as you'll see him all night. And off Davis tried to go left. And that got contained really well by Colin Lloyd. Yeah, that time it almost looked like a 4-4, four, four, four down linemen, four backers, four leg. They're going to mix up their coverage tonight as well. And you said it, Norm. Lloyd just did a good job of shedding the block on the edge and not allowing Eric Davis to turn upfield. And I think that's the biggest difference right now offensively between what you're seeing with Lake and Rossford is 
It's been hard for the Bulldogs to get to the edge of the field so far here tonight, and conversely for Lake, they've been able to mix things up and really throw the kitchen sink at the Bulldogs' defense. Right, Rossford is content if they could keep it on the ground, but you're now down three touchdowns. Allen, quick out, Myers. Got four or so. It'll be about third and 11, third and 11 and a half. Close to, oh, third and 10. And now Allen to throw again. Incomplete. Eric Davis was the intended receiver, but but he slipped. I'm not sure if it was a cut or what it was, but he stumbled and that threw off the timing of the pattern. Well, and he, and he had Chase Bainey over the middle on a slant, and that was probably his best option on that play, but once again, Lake doing a pretty good job of bearing down on him and making him get rid of the ball quickly. And Sherman has an arm, so does Duncan, or uh, excuse me, uh, John Allen. They both have arms, but when you have that kind of pressure and you're not getting that push, Offensively, it makes it hard for your quarterback to make a good read. So the Bulldogs are going to have to punt it away. End over end kick. Be taken by Duncan at the 30, and he's upended at about the 33. Folks, we want to remind you again, too, don't forget about Dr. Todd Leslie and Grace Speaks. For more information, you can go to grace-speaks.org. But the alumni Red Wings hockey game is going to be Saturday, November 1st at the Cube down in Finley at 3 p.m. For more information, once again, go to grace-speaks.org, but the proceeds go to raising money for speech therapy for kids down in the Finley area. Great event. Go check it out on November 1st. So Jared Reddick is back in. First and 10 flyers in their own 34. Double pass situation. Bowen going to heave it down and incomplete, and that was they were fooling nobody on defense. Yeah, triple coverage that time, and you see Drayton Williams, one of the big fellas down there. But good job by Rossford to make the read. As soon as they threw it over to Bowen, they drop back, almost pick it off. Three guys right there. You know, that's a situation where Bowen would have been better off running the ball because there wasn't anybody that went after him. Yeah. There were four defenders that dropped back into coverage. They got to cover him on the outside over here. They got to get eye on him now. Double handoff yep, again. Yep, double handoff again. Duncan, and he's hit behind the line. Well, now if you're Rossford, this is this is where you see what you're made of here. You got him in a nice third and long situation. You've done a good job reading your keys, and that was something that was going to be difficult. Drew's back new tonight with a guy like Reddick back there. You can't always bring the pressure. And you can't always sit back and let them pick you apart. You really have to mix things up. So let's see what they and do you're right. here. And this is where the defense has to hold on third and 14. Green lays in motion to the right. Raddick. Running, throws. Complete. 45 and a first down. Drayton Williams on the reception. Well, and you see that time they drop back in coverage, only have a three-man rush from the defensive line, excuse me. And that time, you know, in the DB, it's a hard it's a hard read to make that time where you're looking at Reddick's eyes, deciding whether or not to go after him or stay on Williams. And that time you kind of get caught in the middle, and Williams is a big target there at 6'2", able to make the catch. Well, and I, and I sound like a broken record uh, talking about uh, – Reddick throwing on the run, but you know we've yet to see one of those throws not be on the numbers. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, and I think what makes this kid special, even all the basketball games that we've gotten to cover in the NBC, and we'll be covering again this year on Toledo Sports Network, he's a really good decision maker, and he's cool as a cucumber. He's not a guy that really ever gets too high or right, too but, low. But you can make good decisions and still not be accurate with the football. True. <laughs> True. And some of that is. It's just God-given talent and having a good arm, but he's a great decision maker. Hand off short. Nice blocking on the edge. Cut it back in. First down again. Inside the 40 and out of bounds. You see Austin Hess coming around the edge here again. Todd Walters does a good job getting the seal on the outside. Austin Hess doing a good job on the inside. 
And those guys have been doing a great job on the kickout blocks tonight. That's such a huge thing for the running game, especially when you're trying to turn up field. And they're getting bodies on people right now. Gain of 13. 28-7 Flyers, 9.08 to go second quarter. Reddick rolls. Looking, 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 throws. Got a man. Walters, first down. Well, and there's an, another perfect example of staying calm under pressure, continuing to look downfield, gets chased out of the pocket, and still is able to make a really good throw. And as a defense there, you're kind of caught up because you're watching his eyes and you're trying to read the football, but you're trying not to lose your man behind you either. So that, that is very difficult when you have to respect the run with a guy like Reddick. Reddick was incomplete on his first throw. He's now completed 11 straight. First down at the 26. Reddick looks incomplete. Of course, as soon as I said 11 in a row, he threw it just behind Connor Bowen. It's like the free throw curse. You talk about a guy that's 98% for the line and he'll rim one out. You know, you, the ultimate one is still the Gary Anderson field goal. <laughs> With the, for the Vikings in the playoffs against oh, yeah. the Falcons, where he hasn't missed all year. <laughs> Boy, that was a crazy one. What was that, 98? Holy shnikes, we're getting old. Well, I am old. You'll get there <laughs> one day, too. Hand off short on second down. Got to the outside. Close to another first down. Looks like they're going to mark it at about the 18. That'll leave him about two yards short. When you see Nate Childress coming out there now, number 81. I think he's the one rocking the pink shoelace. It's good to see that young fella on the field. And, you know, one thing Drew's back talked about his group this year, too, Norm, is just what a pleasure to coach there. Got a great group of kids, a lot of academic, all Ohio-type players on his team. On third and two. Flag is down. This would be a first down if the play holds, but I don't think it will. Childress comes in right there, one of the first guys on the tackle, and you're right. on the Flyers. And I think what's cool, too, is Rossford does their senior night earlier in the year. Something that Drew's back has done since he's been a head coach over the last 14, 15 years. He lets the parents of the players down on the sideline and have sideline and locker room access during the last home game of the year just to see what it's really all about and what their sons are out there doing on the football field and I think that's that's a pretty cool way to go about it. Well now it's third and 12 for the Flyers. 8.26 to go in the second. 28 to 7 Lake. Reddick the throw. Bowen did he stay in bounds? He did. How about that for a catch? Going to be short of the first but It'll make it fourth and fairly short. And that time, Rossford bringing the pressure, once again trying to mix it up. This time, they bring seven. And once again, Reddick, cool under pressure, throws it on a rope and puts it where Bone can get it, and Bone making a great catch. Was able to keep a foot in bounds. Fourth and two for Lake. Reddick to roll. Wants to run, can't find anything, pushed out of bounds, and the Rossford defense for the first time tonight will hold. Great pursuit that time and great angle on the pursuit from the senior, Casey Orr. Really running in a straight line, and that's what you want to do, especially when you're running to the edge of the field. You want to cut the guy off. Now watch him right here. He chases him outside, sheds the block here. Now watch when Reddick breaks. Boom, see that straight line cuts them off right at the numbers, doesn't allow them to turn up field. When you square your shoulders like that, you usually have a pretty good chance of making the tackle, especially on the edge. And almost right into your living room. Don't freak him out now. Nice Mark. shot there on the <laughs> sidelines. Hung in there pretty well. Out of the pistol now on first down. Davis didn't get anything. The last four carries for Davis, he's netted a negative one yard after uh, having a whole bunch here early. Well, the big fellas up front on the defensive line right now, Aaron Segetti. You also got Lucas Lombardo in there. 
He had five carries for 59 yards. One of the seniors, Perkins, not real big at 5'5", 156, but just been a bullet so far at the no spot. On second down, here comes the screen to Davis. Look at that play by Jacob Reddick. And, and slowed him down long enough until he got help. Yeah, Reddick, the younger Reddick we're talking about now, he's, he's making some plays out there. And once again, you can't, there's no greater teacher than experience. And if there's one positive thing that's going to come out of his older brother getting hurt this year is he got some really, really good reps, almost brought the team back against Eastwood, who, barring uh, anything crazy happening, is going to win the NBC this year again. And that's, that's just going to pay dividends for that young fella next year, and that was just a great play that time. Third down for Rosford, third and 14 with 7.23 to go in the second. Now we're going to get a, looks like a Rosford timeout. In Toledo Sports Network in the search bar, and on Twitter, at Toledo Sports Network, and on Facebook, at backslash Toledo Sports Network. Third and 19. Allen Earl. Incomplete. Well, that time he, he held up. It looked like he wanted to go downfield to number 25, Andrew Steer. Steer had a leg up on the sideline, and I think with the pressure, he just hesitated that time and thought maybe he could get the first down marker. And so really, I think that was his third thing going through his head right there was to try to throw the ball at the end because he had Steer deep. Yeah, but you're talking about 35 yards in the air on the run. Yeah. <laughs> Knuckleball. Duncan will take it at the 48. Broke one tackle, and down near the 43. And uh, we, we're, we've gotten confirmation that he did retire the acid wash jeans, so you won't have to see those uh, at the <laughs> DJ booth on the dance floor. All right, he said that. I didn't. Here's <laughs> short on the backfield. 30, and <laughs> upended, and somersaulted to about the 27. Well, tonight the Flyers really have been doing a great job on their downfield blocking. You see right here the, the seal on the edge again by Drayton Williams. Right there. Or actually, excuse me, that was number eight. That was not number nine. That was number eight. Zach Greenlees, the senior, also one of uh, Reddick's targets out here, doing a great job on the wide side of the field for Brandon Short. You know, as, uh, as things cool off pretty quickly here, you got a little light fog settling in. Reddick to Walters. First down. Walters. Out of bounds near the 16. Doing a little skip to my Lou that time from Walters. Jumped over two tacklers. It's always scary when guys do that leap because you, you, you just, when you don't have your center of gravity like that and somebody hits you in the knee or the hip, I mean, you're going to go flying. It's going to look like the tilt-a-whirl. That time he avoided it. Nice athletic play from the big fella, but that's, boy, is that a dangerous play. First down at the Bulldog 15. Raddick throws. Got his tight end. Drayton Williams near the five. And all 175 pounds of... Is that Williams or is that Greenlees? That was Greenlees. Greenlees. Yeah. That was number eight, not number nine. Yeah, we are getting old when we're getting our nines and our eights. <laughs> well, we weren't at a real good angle on that. I couldn't, I couldn't quite tell. But that time it looked like cover three from Rossford just trying to keep the, the receivers in front of him, and that was a big hit that time by Bainey. And this is where you got to be mindful of that jet sweep with Brandon Short. First catch for Greenlees. Here's Short. Flag flies. Lucas Lombardo was the lead blocker on that play, but I, I get a feeling this is all coming back. This is the 10 yard Monback. <laughs> Where they all go, Monback. <laughs> Well, it's been a lot of fun covering both of these teams this year. I think Mark Evans 
has done a great job since he's come over to Lake and Millbury, really utilizing the playmakers to the best of their abilities, and that's always a good sign of a good coach when you can kind of take the group and meld it into what you want and use the athletes that you have to develop the offense. And I think Drew's back has done the same thing here with Bainey and Eric Davis and Sherman and company and John Allen at Rossford. All right, 10 yards from the spot of the foul is back to the 14. Screen, Bowen, 10, and down near the 8-yard line. And Rossford's done a good job a few times tonight when they have brought the pressure in terms of forcing Reddick out of the pocket and forcing him to get rid of the football. But they just have not been able to get to him before he's released it. And on top of that, as you've mentioned a few times tonight, Norp, he's just, he's just done a great job of throwing the football on the run and getting it to his playmakers in space. Seven catches for 120 yards for Connor Bowen so far. Third down and about three. Short. First down, out of bounds, inside the five. Or at least very close to the five. Well, and really I think the difference from about midway through the first quarter on, too, is offensively for Rossford, not getting yards on first down because they've been stuffing the run up the middle. And that's really limited what they've been able to do in terms of trying to get it to guys like Myers and... Chase Bainey on the outside. Needed three, got four, first and goal at the four. Walters in motion to the right, and Reddick to roll. Looks, throws, got Connor Bowen in the back of the end zone, touchdown. I didn't think that's who it was originally intended for. I didn't see Bowen in the back stripe, but Jarek Reddick sure did. Yeah, Greenlees was, looked like his primary target on the slant, and then you also had over the middle number 21, to Lauder, but he finds Bone in the back of the end zone, and why not? Young fella having quite the game, and you just see really catching everything that's been thrown his way so far here tonight. Reddick 17 for 19, and just threw his third touchdown pass. Extra point is good, so with 4.52 to go in the second, it's now Lake 35 and Rossford 7. Able to bring him down tonight in the backfield. Got to kick this one deep this time. Chase Bainey on the return. 25, 30, and out near the 32. Fog starting to roll in a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, looking a little ethereal tonight. Uh, Halloween, you got the zombie walk downtown. Nice shot by the crew. Really nice shot. First and 10 at the 31 for the Bulldogs. And off Davis, 35, 40, first down. Still churning them legs, but 42 is about where it's gonna stop momentum-wise, but 11 yard gain. And that's the best run that Davis has had in a while. You know, getting a chance to do uh, a lot of basketball games out here, and once again, stay tuned this year on the Toledo Sports Network. We'll be bringing them to you on the CW13 and Toledo Sports Network. But watching him even as a sophomore in the JV games before the varsity games, you could just tell he was a tough defensive-minded player, and that comes out when he runs and catches the football in the gridiron too. All right, hand off again, Davis. Two yards this time to the 44. Yeah, basketball season. We got to get out to Wauseon because that is that's a terrific uh, group of kids, and that basketball team I think went to. Uh, I know they went to district. I don't. I remember quite where the where the road ended. They had a very deep team last year. We actually covered uh, a football, Saturday game out here against Rossford. Right, and the football team obviously really good too. I mean, it's a, just a great group of kids. Second and eight. Double, Double hand handoff. Yeah. Yep. Bainey got a couple to the 46. Well, and you get the feeling right now with Rossford that it's just a matter of time before they have that one big play. They, they haven't had that since the beginning of the football game. And give credit to Lake's defense. They've obviously done their homework, done a pretty good job stuffing the run up the middle tonight. But 
It only takes one of those plays to kind of inject a little bit life into your crowd and into, into your team. And Rossford's on the cusp of that. Third and six. Allen on the move. Still looking and threw it away. He waited as long as he could, but just couldn't find anybody open. Good coverage by the secondary. Tronics, get your car ready for winter. She's coming. She'll be here before you know it. There's the running punt. Wallers with a fair catch near the 26-yard line. And about a 28-yard kick. As you saw there on the screens, DVDs are available of these games. 419-514-1302. You know, and really that's why we do this. You know, we, we like having the, the memories for these guys to be able to have with their families. Some big games. I mean, one that always sticks out to me is Kyle Nutter for Genoa rushing for 413 yards against yeah. Huron in the playoffs. I mean, that's that's pretty special to be able to have that and to think that, you know, 20 years ago that didn't exist. So it's pretty cool for us to be able to bring those to you guys. All right, on first down, Reddick. Can't find anybody to the left. Can't find anybody up the middle. And down he goes. And finally, the hard work paying off up front for the Hog Mollies at Rossford. Brought the pressure a few times tonight. And that time they finally are able to bring down the elusive Reddick in the backfield. Well, Had Drayton Williams, but just didn't see him. They did a nice job, too, of collapsing the pocket. You got you to gotta hand a little bit of that sack over to the secondary. Second and 16, here's short. 25, 30, and very close to a first down. I'll tell you what, that jet sweep has been pretty lethal for them this year. Even as a defense when you know it's coming, that line has done a great job consistently this year of shedding the defensive guys up front and allowing Brandon Short to turn the corner. And what's dangerous is about that play, too, as you've seen tonight, Norm, they do the double handoff out of that. They'll fake it. They'll roll out Redding to the other side. So there's a three or four variations they can do on that play, depending on what the defense gives them. And Short going to get the call on third and two. Hit behind the line. Now he's in a lot of trouble, and down he goes. Yeah, that time it looked like it was Bainey and number 53. Casey Orr, one of the seniors all over at that time. Great coverage from the Bulldogs. Come on. Bainey is back along with Carison at about their own 40-yard lines. Jacob Reddick to punt it away. Wobbly kick. Fair catch called by Bainey at the 44. So Rosford will have a minute 40 to try to put some more points on the board. Well, and I think when you look at this Bulldogs team, you know, they have had some bad luck the last couple of years. You had... Kyle Sherman, I believe it was last year, break his collarbone early in the year. So then John Allen moves the quarterback. This year, same thing. They're banged up early. Nate Childress, one of their best two-way players, has a foot injury. Well, and the, and the program was in a, a really rough hole for, for quite a while. And where they're at now compared to where they were has been so much improvement. Here's Allen into Lake Territory, and it looks like enough for the first down. Good play call that time to come out here, try to get one in the end zone before the half. Allen's got quick feet when he gets out of the pocket. You saw it right there. And that's going to help open things up downfield. He's talking to some of the lake assistants before the game, too. And, and I, I, we were talking about the, the offensive lines and the defensive lines and, and that Eastwood game, that, that great offensive line by Eastwood kind of wore them down. And you're... <laughs> You're at the mercy of how big your kids get yeah. at this level. Sometimes you get the big kids and sometimes you don't. Here's Allen to throw again. Can't find anybody open. Had a receiver in the area of Andrew Myers incomplete. And Allen's done a pretty nice job. He's made pretty good decisions tonight. Well, and considering the pressure he's faced so far, Lake's done a good job up front really disguising what they're doing. Sometimes they've brought four down linemen. Sometimes they've had a guy standing up coming off the edge. We've seen Brandon Short flying there a few times tonight. So they've really done a good job of mixing things up and keeping the offensive line on their toes. You know, he's given up on some plays and throwing them away and when he's strung them out as long as he can. There's a th Ooh, almost picked off. 
by Jacob Reddick. Had he had another half step, he would have still been running. Yeah, and that's a key right there where just doing a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes. Once that ball snapped in the defensive backfield, especially if you're at one of the safety positions or even as, as Reddick was there, kind of a hybrid between a, a DB and a backer, just does a good job of reading Allen's eyes. Third and 10. Minute 21 to go in the half. 35-7, Lake with the lead. Here's Davis. Inside the 35, he'll be short of the first down. But it's going to be fourth and about two, which is a very makeable distance coming off the third and ten. Well, and they've had some success in the screen game tonight on the wide side of the field. Eric Davis is the workhorse back there. But they have had success on the outside. And now we get... A stoppage and a late timeout. Pub 51 is just a great neighborhood bar and grill. They're about as close to being all things to all people as I've seen. They have a miniature bowling league and they take that pretty darn seriously. Oh, and a dartball league and a cornhole league and a pool league. They have a lot of leagues. Pub 51 has a big outdoor patio too. Well, their pizza and food are reasonably priced too. Give Pub 51 a try. They're on Woodville Road, just a half mile east of the Woodville Mall. Direct snap to Davis, first down. Still turning inside the 20 to the 18. A gain of about 14. Kid's a pit bull, man. Like I said, you could see that in him just even at the JV level in basketball. Really good defensive-minded player, hustles out there, and it, it shows on the football field. And he's got some good hands, too, lining up in the slot this time. Allen trying to screen a Myers. Nice block. Pushed out of bounds near the 10. You see some of the parents down there on the sideline behind the players. In support of the seniors for the Bulldogs. Third catch by Myers. Good tackle there by Duncan. Well, he closed the gap quick on the sideline. That was a pretty good pursuit angle that time. 30 seconds to go in the half. Crossford does not have any timeouts left. Allen looking left. Nice fake. Throws incomplete. And a flag flies. Yeah, right. Might be holding. Let's, uh, might be defensive holding. Yeah, I think it's going to be on Greenlee's. Right there, yep, you saw him hold the back shoulder of Davis. It looked like there may have been some confusion on the route, but when you get that hand up, as you see back there, he gets the hand on the shoulder pad of Davis and pulls, and that's enough for the official. When he sees those hands come out, especially right there on that sideline official by the end zone, they're going to call that 10 out of 10 times. So first to go at the 5, 26 seconds to go in the half. But once again, the Bulldogs do not have any timeouts. So you could probably take one chance running it if you want to. Play action fake. Looking, nobody there. Allen slipped. And he tried to throw it away. We don't see a flag. I'm sure the Lake sidelines would like to see one. They're going to discuss it a little bit. Or they're just going to call him down. Yeah, they're going to call him down way back at the 19-yard line. Now the clock should not have stopped. It's a loss of 14. They'll restart it again. So a bit of a break for Rossford. Because technically they shouldn't have stopped the clock. Because basically, yeah, if they're calling a sack, that clock yeah, if should, him down, they, should continue to run. But it's now third and goal at the 19. So you're going to have two shots to get it in the end zone. Well, and once again, I think I think the screen has been good for them tonight. The few times they busted it out, it looks like they may go trips right again. 
we'll see. But you kind of got to pick your poison if you've got Davis in the slot and you've got Chase Bainey on and, the outside. And they've almost worked almost exclusively to the left side. And you can see that the defense is, is trying to jump some routes on that side. Although they got Myers, it looks like one on one on Greenlee's to the left. And we're waiting for the officials to whistle it a go. Third down and goal to go. Allen going to throw it for the corner of the end zone, and Davis just led him a bit too far. Brandon Short on the coverage. Well, and you see the young fella again laying out for it. A lot of kids wouldn't do that. That's a nice little wheel route, though. I mean, that's that's a that's a well-designed play. And he just, as you can see, let it just a little too far. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a field goal attempt here. Hector aguirre has got a, a leg on him. This is going to be about 36 yards right in the middle of the field. Got it up. Is it long enough? It will be short with six seconds to go in the half. Aguirre's a really good, really good soccer player, pretty tough basketball player, too. But it looks like his range is about 35. Yeah, right, right there on the edge of it. Once again, folks, you can tune in to us on ToledoSportsNetwork.com, watch some past games also on YouTube, as well as the multi-shows that uh, Mike Jamison has going on here at Toledo Sports Network, not just sports, but cooking, home improvement, you name it, and on Facebook.com backslash Toledo Sports Network, especially with basketball season coming up. And Spread the word. And soon to be Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Yeah, PCW coming back. All right, quick kneel down, and that's going to end the half. Welcome back, third quarter. The Flyers to kick off. Lake with a 35-7 lead over Rossford. Glad to have you with us here. Norm Weimer, Mike Bauman, the Toledo Sports Network and CW13. Duncan to boot it away. And it'll be taken at about the 10-yard line. There, Davis. Yeah, they got Davis back there on the return. And a nice return out to about the 35. Well, you can't get it all back at once. Well, I liked what they did. Like what they did on the drive to end the half. Got close to getting the end zone. 
What, what, what we got going on down here in the student a, section for Lake? That's a Lake student section. I don't know where we get a shot of that, but they all did the uh, LeBron James baby powder pat with their hands <laughs> all at the same time. Next week it starts. <laughs> and there's a cloud of baby powder just sitting there. Davis on the carry on first down. Davis out close to the 43. I think I think Rossford did a good job of keeping their heads in the game towards the end of the second quarter there. The defense got to Jared Reddick, which they hadn't been able to do most of the first half. The offense comes down, doesn't get the points, but I think some confidence in terms of mixing up the offense a little bit on that last drive. Second down and two. Allen will hand it off to Davis, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Colin Lloyd was the one who made the penetration and the tackle. Basically just corralled him that time. But that was one thing that they did exceptionally well from about the mid-first quarter on was the Flyers' pressure up the middle and their ability to stop Davis on the read. So I, I'm wondering if we, we might see a little bit more misdirection because Rossford also will bring Bainey in motion, do some jet sweep stuff, and had some success on the screen passes as well. Third and a long yard. And a handoff this time is Chase Bainey. Bainey got plenty for the first down. You know, and I like the way that he plays, too. He's about 5'11", 175, but he's got good hands. He hits hard on defense, and he runs hard offensively. I mean, he really works for everything that he gets. Not the biggest guy out there, but good hands and good vision. So first down at midfield, Bainey will line up with Allen and get the call. Tough yards to the 47. Well, and you'll take that on first down. That was something they really struggled with in the first half was yards on first down. Right here, you get three, three yards on first down. You can get another three yards here, and then you're in a third and short situation, and that's been a struggle tonight for the Bulldogs. Now it's Davis this time will get the call. Close to the 43. Now they're going to mark it at the 44. Gain a three, it'll be third and four. Well, and as we talked about with Reddig and his younger brother, I mean, this is going to be good experience for Kyle Sherman with the injuries that they've had and the playing time that he's had to split with John Allen the last couple of years. Davis, first down. I tell you what, one guy who's had a really consistent game up front for the Bulldogs has been 75, Travis Sobleski. I've said his name a couple of times tonight, the junior. They're going to love having him back next year at 6'2", 210. Had a great job on a, basically a pancake block right there, taking his man out and help open up that hole for Davis. Beanie this time in the backfield. We'll get the football. Tough yard or so. Well, in a few times tonight, Lake has brought the pressure off the edge, whether it's been strong side or weak side. You've seen a few times, not just with Drayton William, Williams, but Brandon Short and also number 21, Nick DeLauder out there. And they've done a couple of things where they've either gone four down linemen and rushed on the strong side or had three down linemen and had one guy standing up. And it's really kept Rossford on their toes. Second and about nine. Empty backfield this time. Swing it out to Bainey. Down the sidelines. Tight roped it, first down. Well, that's one way to get the ball to the edge. Well, watch the block this time. Good throw right on the rope. Out there on the edge, number seven, yeah, Anthony Carazone, doing a great job sealing off the edge so Bainey can get the yak, as we like to say, the yards after the catch. First out, the flyer 18. First drive of the second half. 
Lake 35, Rossford 7, 8-18 to go third quarter. Bainey in motion. We'll get the call. Short was in hot pursuit, never quite got there. But Bainey couldn't quite get around the corner. Yeah, you could hear the sidelines from up here yelling sweep. They saw the jet sweep coming, did a good job in terms of edge containment. But Bainey was able to still pick up a little something and not take a loss on the play with the one-yard game. Second and nine. Quick out, Davis. Inside the 15 to the 14. And I think it says a lot about Chase Bainey and what he's been able to do this year, too, in terms of leading the NBC in receiving. There's a lot of playmakers. I mean, obviously, Connor Bone tonight having a huge game, Todd Walters, Brandon Short, three of them right there on Lake. And then you've got Eastwood with the running backs that they have and Wojciechowski and Genoa. I mean, that says a lot what Bainey's been able to do individually this year. Now Allen threw it away. Yeah, it looked like a designed fake QB dive that time to see if they could get the defense to bite. They don't do a good job covering Bainey in the slot. And Allen just has to throw it away. So that's just good defensive reads that time. Everybody's staying on their keys. Now you got fourth and about five. And we do not have a play clock here, but uh, this looks like it's taking quite a bit of time. Allen. Looking for the screen, back to Davis. Nicely designed play, into the end zone, touchdown. I love that call that time from Drew's back and his guys get the defense to flood right. Have one of your playmakers wide open on the other side of the field. That's a great play call that time from Rossford. You see the defensive pressure. You got five guys right there all looking at the quarterback. And Davis sneaks open on the backside and gets another touchdown. Nicely designed play. And he'll be back next year for the Bulldogs, too. Guire with the kick. It's good. 7-17 to go in the third. Lake 35, Rosford 14. We'll be back on the Toledo Sports Network and CW 13. Well, nice drive by the Bulldogs to start the second half. Lake is curious about whether we might get some kind of onside kick. You got nine guys within 12 yards of the 50-yard line. Got to squib this one down. Taken by Walters. And down at about the 33. I'm not sure if you saw that, that one onside kick that was kicking around YouTube. I, I am not aware. They had uh, somebody designed a play where they had a player uh, just stepped like one step inside the, uh, the sideline, and they moved everybody together like they were going to do that onside kick straight up the middle. Yeah. Quarterback ran up there, and everybody stopped. And then when they stopped, he just... The defense all came to the middle, and he just kicked it to the one kid over <laughs> by the sidelines. It was all by himself. <laughs> nice play. There's Raddick on first down. The lotter, a tight end on the reception. And a pickup of about 16. So Jared Reddick has picked up where he left off. Well, he throws him on a rope. I mean, and that's really, I think, something that's great about watching this kid is his arm, is his accuracy is incredible. 18 of 20 for 250 tonight. Reddick to Walters. 
Well, you know, we've talked about some of the injuries with both these teams, but when you look at what Rossford has coming back next year, when you've got Eric Davis coming back, Chase Bainey, also a junior, Kyle Sherman, who's got a lot of good reps in at the varsity level at the quarterback position. I mean, that's three key pieces to your offense that are going to be back on this football team next year. And conversely for Lake, you've got Jacob Redding, who will likely be filling that void that will be left by his brother going down to Finley. I mean, both these teams are going to still be really good next year. Well, Brandon Short will be back. Reddick on the throw to the numbers to Bowen. I just, I just marvel at the accuracy. I mean, that's a, that's an off balance on the move throw. Well, we talked about it a little bit about wondering why guys like Reddick don't get the shot at D1. You know, sometimes it's a numbers game. Is it his size? What is it? But I mean, I. With the offensive system that Finley runs and, and the type of school that is, that's going to be a good fit for him. They're getting a good one. First and 10 at the Rossford 34. Tight formation. Short. Nice block. Short of the first down, but nine on first down. Tell you what, Austin Hess is really having himself a night, number 56 on the kickout blocks downfield, especially on that jet sweep. I mean, he's, anytime there's been a body in front of him, he's pretty much taken the guy out of the play and allowed Brandon Short to turn up field. Got another good block that time downfield from Todd Walters. 11 carries, 74 yards for Short. Who will get the call again? Close to the first. And it looks like they're going to move the chains. Short, you mentioned too, coming back 18 touchdowns coming into this game, averaging nine yards a carry on the year. 751 yards rushing, fourth in the NBC. Of course, Woe Johowski, I mean, he had over 300 in one game leading the way for the Comets, but it's going to be great having that young fellow back for you if you're a Flyers fan. Reddick, and that time he led him just a bit too far. Walter's the intended receiver, and that's just his third incomplete of the night. He's 20 for 23. Well, I, you know, I think one thing to keep in mind, too, about the Bulldogs, I mean, all, all five of their losses this year have come against pretty good football teams. I mean, they, and the ones that they lost, they, they had chances. You know, we, we were out at Genoa for that one. I mean, they, they had some chances in that football game and made some turnovers and some mistakes. Second and ten. Fake. Nope. Thought it went to short, but... It did not hit behind the line. Yeah, Brennan Reynolds on the stop that time on the double handoff to, I believe it was Adam Duncan who yeah. got the got the carry. And that, that time Reynolds six. did a great job snuffing that out. A junior, 5'10", 187. They've done that a few times tonight. You didn't see that one a whole lot against Eastwood. But they've busted that out a few times tonight, and they've had pretty good yeah. success. Actually, Duncan's had three carries, and two of them have been negative on that play. Reddick the throw on third and 17. Got a man. First down. Walters. You know, it looks like they've practiced that on the edge of the field because those guys are making <laughs> catches where they keep both feet in bounds. I mean, in high school, you only need one foot. And watch this. I mean, just you, you, that, that, you couldn't draw it up any better than that. Fifth catch for Walters. Short inside the 10. And flags fly late. More tempers. So again, a four on the play and then four on the penalty. We'll put it on the four and make it second and two. Greenlee's going to get the handoff, but he's going to lose a yard. Jack 
Yeah, one of the seniors that they'll miss for sure. There's been a few times this year where they've looked to him over the middle of the field and come up with some big catches from that young fella. And really just to have both of those guys in, in terms of tight ends, defensive end type guys with Greenlees and Williams is a real luxury for Emmons. Third down and about three at the five. Short. Didn't get in the end zone, but he got a first down. And once again, not to sound like a broken record, but Austin Hess, number 56 on the outside, getting the block. Short couldn't turn the corner, but he sealed off the edge enough if you watch this right here. Watch Hess. Boom, there's the seal, and he cuts back upfield. Brandon Short cuts back upfield. Oh, yeah, and he had Lombardo pulling on the play, too. who got a nice block across the line of scrimmage. Short didn't get in. And if you're late, you're thinking, okay, you got us once, but we got a couple more. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it's so hard to defend in the terms of a short yardage situation here with Lake because they have so many weapons. So you got to be aware of the jet sweep, but you also got to be aware of number one and number 10 on the outside. Yeah, the defense, they're still out there playing hard. Here's short. Touchdown. <laughs> Well, and like you just said, Norm, it's not for lack of effort. I mean, Rossford has brought some pressure tonight. They've tried to mix it up defensively, but there are so many good players out there for the Lake Flyers, not just at the skill positions, but just like we mentioned, Lombardo up front. You got big number 70 in there, Andrew Rutherford at 325. I mean, those are <laughs> hard guys to shed if you're a defensive lineman. Duncan for the extra point. Line drive kick is good. Minute 47 to go in the third. It's Lake 42 and Rossford 14. We'll be back on the Little Sports Network and CW 13. Duncan to kick off. I talked to some of the coaches too uh, for the Flyers before the game, and they said uh, that game against Genoa. That not that Genoa didn't play well, but. But that was a, a tough game to try to bounce back after that brutal loss, really, to, uh, to Eastwood, the game that went down to the final play. And uh, emotionally, that the players weren't there. Well, you know, and to have a, two games like that in a row, to have Eastwood and Genoa back-to-back -back is, is a tall task, whether or not, you know, Jared is healthy 100%. You know, and that was the difficult thing about the Eastwood game is, you know, obviously we're unbiased as announcers and you want to see both teams healthy. And it was unfortunate. I mean, it still ended up being one heck of a game, but it was unfortunate that he went down early in that one. And off on first down doesn't get much. Yeah, and, and I thought that uh, he got hurt. Reddick got hurt on the quarterback sneak uh -huh. for the touchdown, and that was not the case. I, the coaches said that he got hurt on the first drive oh, of really? the game and continued to play. Yeah, because we thought for sure it was on that dive that he had. And then it started uh, stiffening up and getting worse as the game went on because he played, he played well despite the fact that he hurt it when he went out of bounds on the first drive of the game. Allen, the throw, Carasone to the 31. He's one of those seniors out there as well. I think Carazone. John Allen's done a nice job of managing this game for Rossford. You are who you are as a quarterback. He's... You know, he's not going to be a guy that's going to go out and throw for 300 yards. But I think he's managed the game very well tonight. Throw over the middle. And we're going to get a flag for contact on Greenlays. Even though it was not a catchable ball. 
Well, and then you look at the one interception that he had. I mean, in that case, it's fourth down. He's fourth trying down. to make a play. You're under pressure. you got to get rid of it anyway. You yeah. Get, you get sacked, you're, you're going to lose the ball anyway. I, and in most situations, if you turn the ball over to a team inside their 20 like that, you're in pretty good position, whether you punted them to get in there. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see that turnover on the stat sheet, but then Bowen reels off a 70-yard reception, and uh, the rest is history on that drive. But... He's nine for 18. He's, yeah. he's done fine. And that's about where he's been on the year, too, 48 for 89. Allen, incomplete. I like the pass that time. I mean, the, the route, too. I mean, it's kind of almost like a double move. It's just a little out route and then cutting up the field. It's almost like a slant into a wheel route. Which, as a defender, when you're backpedaling like that, even when you're watching the quarterback's eyes, it's it's hard to recover like that when you get beat on a move like that. I mean, I don't care how fast you are. Well, Davis, Those are tricky routes to cover. Yeah, Davis has got wheels, too. So that's, <laughs> there lies your other problem. Second and ten. On the delay, Bainey. Nice tackle, Austin Roos. Haven't called him a lot tonight, uh, but he's uh, a good football player. He's playing like a man against Eastwood. We called his name a lot <laughs> that night, a lot. You know, just because, too, that you're not getting your name called doesn't mean that you're not causing trouble on the inside. All right, uh, that'll end the third quarter. We'll take time and be back for the fourth. It's Lake 42 and Rothford 14 on the Toledo Sports Network at CW13. Do your utility bills have you down? Get out from under those heavy bills with new windows from Dunright Building Services. New windows from Dunright can change the vision of your home both inside and out. And right now, for a limited time only, you can get any white double hung standard window for only $179 each. Remember, for a job done right, you better call Dunright. New home, same address. It starts with new windows. Call us at Dunright Building Services today. The Bulldogs will punt it away. Oh, and a missed kick. See him this weekend. They'll and, take care of you. And the only real difference now is he's not in college. <laughs> <laughs> it's First <fun>. out for the <laughs> Flyers. This is Jacob Raddick who's in the game. we got three flags that fly on the play. There's no way this play holds. We're really proud to be a part of, so go to, go to grace-speaks.org for more information on that event. All right, 10 yards from the spot of the foul makes it actually first and 23. Pump fake. This is Jared Reddick back into the game. Look who he found. Duncan at the 40 and a first down. Well, you know, and I think that play is a perfect example of what you've been talking about tonight, Norm. That time Reddick rolling out, thought about running it, but... Again, the patience and the maturity and the wherewithal to just wait till one of his guys gets open and he throws across his body. All his momentum is taken to him to his left and he throws right-handed and he finds his guy 20 yards downfield under pressure. It's just a, it's a pleasure watching him play. It just is. Short the ball carrier. Gains... About three to the 29. Well, you know, and another guy that's fun to watch that, that it's been unfortunate we haven't had an opportunity to see more of this year is Nate Childress for Rossford. Committed to the University of Toledo. Great. Second and 12 for the Flyers. 10.25 to go in the game. Reddick, screen coming to short. 30, 25, stiff arm, 20. And a first down. Well, once again, that's just quickness and athleticism right there from Brandon Short. A pretty good read on the play for number 56, Ethan Little Deer, who's trying to chase him down on the outside. But Short gets away from the tackle, gets a couple blocks downfield, and is able to make another nice play. Three 
330 yards through the air. Short the ball carry. I didn't get anything. And again, uh, I wonder, did we get laundry again after the play? Green lays the man in motion to the right. And Reddick to throw. Looks left. Throws left. Got Walters. Short gain to the six. 24 of 27 for 333. Some big boy numbers right there. That's, that's, quarterbacks at the high school level do not go <laughs> 24 for 27. They just don't. And 89%. One those, and one of those incompletions was on the first pass of the game from him. Which was a drop. Yeah. <laughs> he had one behind a receiver, one too far in front. Although there were a couple of really nice catches, too, along the way. Swings at the short, into the end zone, touchdown. And there's touchdown pass number four. Well, if there was a high school fantasy league, you'd be happy if you had number five on your team tonight. But, you know, and once again, that's not that's not to, to knock Rossford. You know, this is a team that's had some injuries this year. And save for the Genoa game, where Lake only had 14 points, as you mentioned, just a, an emotionally tough game to come back after that heart-wrenching one-point loss to Eastwood. You know, this, they've done this. This is pretty much what they've done to teams this year is put up points. Well, I'll give Genoa a lot of credit in that game. And, and they played maybe as well as they played all year in that game. That kick is good. So with 9.39 to go, it's Lake 49 and Rossford 14. We'll be back on the Toledo Sports Network at CW 13. Threes are about the only thing that uh, stops the clock. Kick going to be taken at the 10-yard line by Davis to the 30. Cuts it back in, 35, and a nice return out to about the 37-yard line. Want to remind everybody, too, you got a wedding coming up. You got a holiday event. Give Creative Video Imagery a call at 419-514-1302. DJ and videotaping on a professional level for your event or your wedding at a great price. Call Mike Jameson. Guy's got over 20 years of experience prior not only to me having facial hair, but also before I uh, before I got out of my huggies, folks. Mike just Jameson's to, been doing it for a while. Just for the record, uh, Mike Bauman's rocking a little chin music. So. <laughs> oh, nice throw down the right sidelines. Got Davis. Cut it in at the 30 to 25. And finally corralled near the 15-yard line. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him next year. As we mentioned, Kyle Sherman coming back. So he'll likely be your QB. But you're going to have to keep an eye on number 20, both as probably a scat back and wide receiver out of the slot. And we got a flag again. Holy shnikes. 49 yards on that pitch and catch. And, boy, is that going to be a bummer if it's on the Bulldogs after a huge play. Uh, I mean, it's, I believe it's post in the game and they're they're still working hard but you, those you don't want to see Davis the ball carrier didn't get much and I, I, I go back to what I said a little bit earlier too about about Rosford is you know they 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 had more losses in a row than they wanted to count a few years ago and their resurgence has been fun to watch and they're not, they're not among the elite in the NBC, but there's a nice pass down the right sideline. Touchdown. That's a, that's a new name we have not called tonight, too. Andrew Steer. Yes. Good for the senior to get on the board. He'll remember that one. And I do think it's pretty cool the way that Drew's back does uh, quote-unquote senior night. Instead of it just having to be the last game of the year, they do it earlier in the year. But the last game for the seniors, they allow the parents to hang out on the sidelines and kind of see what their, their kids go through. And you see one of those guys, 81, that's just, it just stinks seeing that man, seeing uh, children still a little gimpy out there. But uh, can't wait to see what that young man does in a rocket uniform. Extra point is good. So 7-12 to go in the game. 
We'll take a timeout and come back. It's Lake 49 and Rossford 21 on the Toledo Sports Network at CW13. There's the onside kick. Reddick had it, fell backwards on it, and that doesn't mean that he has it. No, Rossford got it. Reddick, and that's uh, Jacob Reddick, the younger Reddick, who got his hands on it, then it went behind him, and, and he fell backwards on it. And the problem is you can't grab the ball when it's underneath your back. Yeah, when you're on your back and you're still and you're still laying there belly up like that, it's it's pretty hard to maintain control of the football. And I believe it was number 35, Nick Wagner, the junior, coming up with the football. So Rossford got some momentum on their side now. They had numbers on that side. They had they had six bulldogs and just three flyers. So we'll see what the bulldogs do here. Allen screen coming. 35-30 down the sidelines. This is Bainey inside the 10 and corralled near the two-yard line. But a flag all the way back at the 43, although that could be a late hit. Yeah, and John Allen's jogging back, but you see him trying to catch his breath here. He, he took a shot, so I think you're right, Norm. I think there's a potential that we could see a late hit. Nice shot there by one of our camera guys. Yeah, roughing the passer. You look on the replay here, a good job by Bainey to get to the sidelines. He's very elusive. I mean, he it looks like he's going to be out, and he'll, he'll pick up five or ten more gallops up the field. So 42 yards from Allen to Bainey. And the last three John Allen passes have gone for 49, 29, and 42. Davis <laughs> ran into a wall at the one. And who else but Austin Hess getting up. Looked like Lombardo was in there as well. Number 20 also in there. Lloyd. He literally looked like he ran into a wall. <laughs> 635 and counting to go. Direct snap coming to Davis. Look at, oh, he threw it, touchdown. That's the old little jump pass. Two of their touchdowns, they've had some great play calls. They rolled the defense right on the previous touchdown pass from Allen to Davis. Faked out the defense that time. Looks like Davis is going to dive in. And just a little jump pass into the end zone. Cody Ego, or Igo, I-G-O on the reception. And he's one of the captains. Kick is good, so it's 6-12 to go. It's Lake 49 and Rossford 28. We'll be back on the Toledo Sports Network at CW13. Imagine we're going to get an onside kick again, and we do. And at time, look at this. Jacob Reddick cut through the line and <laughs> made it to the 20-yard line. Stranger than fiction, I've man. I've seen it happen before where guys have run it back for a touchdown, but he didn't quite have the speed to be able to do so. Well, he, he had the perfect bounce, went right up into the bread basket, <laughs> and he was just full full tilt going the other way. What a game, man. Watch this. Boom, right to him. And Broke boom goes tackles. the dynamite. <laughs> and it was... Uh, Noah Tegemeyer, who uh, saved the touchdown. This play is going to get whistled dead. Yeah, I got 12 men on the field on Rossford. A little confusion on who, who to take out for the sub. Well, the way, the way Lake's been playing offensively, I mean, that's not a bad idea. If you could sneak a 12th guy out there. 
Well, I mean, we had a feeling we were going to see some points tonight. That's exactly what we've seen. But it's funny how in high school football you get plays like that in bunches. You know, we had the onside kick, the big play, touchdown, boom. And then that right there, almost a touchdown and an onside kick. Yeah, it's been a fun game. And Jared Reddick is still in there. And he's back to throw again. Going to swing at the short. Oh, incomplete. He took a little peek, I think, of where he was going and didn't quite see it all the way into his hands. So that's four incompletes, two of them drops. Although he had a couple of rather acrobatic catches. Yeah, yeah. So Connor Bowen. All evens out. Connor Bowen tonight, too, man. Kid's got some hands on him. And a fun basketball player to watch. Short. First down to the eight yard line. That's 94 yards for short on 19 carries. And at this level, too, what's fun is, that, you know, I think people forget how much coaching plays a factor and just young kids having an opportunity to do what they do and develop. You know, it says a lot about Emmons that he's been able to take Reddick's game to even another level this year. And same thing with Drew's back, what he's been able to do with John Allen, Kyle Sherman. Most teams, if they lose their starting quarterback, they'd be out of it. And they've still put up numbers with two different quarterbacks back there. Short the ball carrier. Close to the six. You know, and they're good dudes. I mean, we've done a lot of roster games. We've done a lot of late games. I mean, basketball and football, Coach Bowen, Coach Vorst, close with both of those guys. They're big supporters of Toledo Sports Network, and we really appreciate it. But, you know, it reflects in the teams that they have and the way their kids play. I mean, I, I just I do think that gets lost a little bit sometimes at the high school level about how much that affects the, the talent of these kids. Second and goal at the six. Short. Inside the five. Did he get in? They said he did touchdown. There's that sweep again. That gets him over the 100-yard mark at 102. His second touchdown on the ground. He's had two receptions through the air. So I believe that'll put him at 22 touchdowns on the year. And they, so they played the Batman theme during the uh, halftime. And if uh, Jared Reddick is Batman, well, Batman's got to have Robin, and Brandon Short's <laughs> been Robin tonight. Extra point is good. We'll take time with 4.52 to go in the game. It's Lake 56, Rossford 28 on the Toledo Sports Network at CW 13. Two to go, 56-28. Lake with the lead and the Flyers to kick off. Squib down the middle. This is Hack across the 40. I want to say thanks again to IBW Local 8. Been with us for six years or before I started shaving, depending on <laughs> the timeline you'd like to use there it's in okay, your Mike. frame it's of right. mind. It's okay. UA Local 50. <laughs> Special thanks to the pipe fitters and plumbers, especially Bob Lynn and the guys out there for being one of our proud sponsors. And TAS Electronics, automatic car starters for your winter vehicle. Also, some good deals on some audio, some car audio, for those of you who want to not be able to hear when you're 35. <laughs> nice throw and a completion. Wide open. But in all seriousness, Goal, thank you to TAS Electronics. Also, First Federal Bank, your area bank. Proud sponsor of Toledo Sports Network. And remember, on November 1st, Great charitable event we're proud to be a part of for Grace Speaks and the Alumni Red Wings hockey game coming down to Finley at the Cube at 3 p.m. Allen, screen coming incomplete. A little high for Bainey. The clock is supposed to keep going. 
Well, for Lake tonight, you know, two losses. Still got the playoff hopes alive right now. Especially considering the two teams they lost to, Eastwood and Genoa, which at this point looks like they will both definitely be in the playoffs. So, well, I guess I guess since we're inside of 30 points, then they no longer run clock. Correct. 56, 28, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that if you got back inside 30 that they stopped doing that. Yeah. I yeah. thought once you got to 30, they, they kept going. But it is. It's going to be fun to see Rossford again next year. We look forward to coming back out here. They're always good to us out here. Always love coming out here. But they've got a lot of playmakers coming back. It's going to be fun to watch them again next year. Yep, Davis with the first down. Allen to throw. Too high. Ooh. Andrew Myers. Myers took a shot. Well, you hate to not bring it in and take the shot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Heard some receivers say that. If you're going to take the shot, you might as well catch the ball. <laughs> easier, e much easier said than done. Yeah. When you got that guy bearing in on, on you. Allen looking for a screen to Bainey again and could not hang on to it. That was the 27th pass attempt by John Allen tonight. And that. I doubt that was part of the game plan. Well, they've really opened it up the last couple of drives. And even in the second half, Davis has been able to run a little bit better. Double handoff, Bainey. Inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line, and a first down. That was his best run of the night. Another double handoff again. We've seen a lot of that tonight. I think I've seen more double handoffs tonight that I may have seen in the last couple of years doing games, but you know what? They've been working for Rossford. Well, that's the old wing T double handoff. Davis stumbles to the eight. It is amazing, isn't it, though, when you think about how much the game has changed, even, even 20 years ago, you know, when you look at, like, Ohio State and Michigan having pretty much feature back systems and the offenses that they're running out in college football. It's crazy. Here's Allen. Oh! Flags fly all over the place. Greenlee's tipped it and knocked it down. Have well, we seen, what, 12 touchdowns tonight? <laughs> and almost oh, 13. Almost a one-handed 13, too. Yeah, Bainey couldn't quite bring it in. And this really is a cool field, too. It's kind of like old sandlot football, grass. It's kind of funny to think that even at, the high school, too. <laughs> even at the high school level, we don't we don't even see grass too much anymore, you know? We were down there uh, before the game, and, and, and I'm off. not saying the grass is long, but we scared a deer up at the 20, <laughs> and he you know, bounced out of there and <laughs> ran off. Allen on fourth down. The throw got his man touchdown. Well, and you talked about these guys playing hard. That one going to number 21. Noah Tegmeyer. You know, these guys have stayed in here and kept fighting, and they've gotten a few touchdowns here in the second half, and that's what you that's got to make you proud as Drew's back, too, to know that you haven't lost the guys. I mean, that's a sign of good coaching, too, when you're still playing all four quarters and competing regardless of whatever the score is. That's Allen's third touchdown pass tonight. Extra point is good. And... Oh, we're getting a pooch this time. Oh. But it went out of bounds. It's not a badly designed play, but he couldn't keep it in bounds. Try to keep her airborne for 20 yards and just chase it. And he looked almost looked like he lost it in the lights. Caleb Janicki. Didn't it? It looked, looked like almost he lost it in the lights. It was in his hands, yeah. And if you look at the angle from where he threw to where he catch it, he might have been looking right into that, that light tower right there. Yep. So third and 10 with a minute 20 to go. Option. Well, we haven't seen that tonight. <laughs> 
and that'll pick up a yard or two. Well, there it is. The whole kitchen sink, Norman. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I don't think we've seen an option tonight. We're down to a minute to go. It's fourth and eight. Well, we've seen a double pass. We've seen double handoffs. We've seen jet sweep. We've seen multiple onside kicks. Right. Where the kicking team got it. One where <laughs> it was almost run back for a touchdown. We had a 92-yard uh, kickoff return for a touchdown. From Todd Walters really early in the game. Here's Pickett. Nobody there. I'm going to go back this way. And I'm going to get a block. And I'm going to get another block. And I'm going to shake a tackle and get very close <laughs> to the first down. Well, the first play where he had to run down the field just to get in there before. I don't think he made it, but uh, he almost did. It's a good way to end a drive compared to how he started it. Nice little run. I remember Chester Taylor had a run like that against Minnesota, and he took it to the house back in uh, 2001, the year they won the Motor City Bowl. Had the, had the whole defense on one side of the field, stopped, turned around, and ran about 60 yards to the end zone. He was fun to watch. Uh, he used to punish people. Yeah. I mean, style-wise, he ran like Walter Payton did. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not comparing him to I'm not saying he was as good as Walter Payton. <laughs> What I'm saying is, though, that he would lay hit, hit, lay licks on the defense. Yeah. And if you had somebody in front of you, he he may you know stick you and try to run you over. He was definitely fun to watch. I want to say thanks again, IBW Local Eight. Been on board for six years. UA Local 50, pipe fitters and plumbers. Thanks again to Bob Lim and the guys out there. And TAS Electronics, get your car ready for winter. Check out some of the sound audio they got there for your car. Car audio, I should say. Sound audio, it's the same thing. <laughs> First Federal Bank, your area bank. It's getting late. It's getting late. <laughs> it looks like the Flyers have gone into the victory formation. Also, once again, Dr. Todd Leslie and Grace Speaks. Uh, great event we got coming up on November 1st at the Cube down in Finley to raise awareness and funding for speech therapy for kids in the Finley, Ohio area with the Alumni Red Wings hockey game. Still spots available if you actually want to play with some former Red Wingers. Go to grace-speaks.org. And Mike Jamison and Creative Video Imagery, 419-514-1302 for your upcoming holiday event or wedding. Give him a ring. All right, that'll tick it down to triple zeros, and we are done. And it was Jarek Reddick, 25 of 29, 339 yards, four touchdowns through the air. Brandon Short, 21 carries, 102 yards on the ground, ran for two and caught two more. As the Lake Flyers move to four and two in the NBC, Rosford will drop to three and three. The Flyers at 7 and 2 and Rossford at 3 and 6. So we'll wrap this one up. Thanks to uh, all the guys, all the crew. Mike Jamison back in the truck. Mike Bauman here. I'm Norm Weimer. And your final score Lake Flyers 56 and Rossford 35. You've been watching the Toledo Sports Network and CW13.